Sorry, mate. Um, it would obviously mean a lot to, to your fans to sabotage Arsenal's attack and grip. Has it got any relevance to you? Not in terms of that as a motivation, no. Uh, I want to win and I, want, I understand the importance of winning against, you know, your traditional rival. I've, you know, I've just come down from Glasgow, mate. I've got a fair idea about what derbies mean to, to, to supporters, but I don't think you... I never believe your motivation should revolve around the demise of somebody else. Your motivation should always be about yourself. And I want to win because I want us to achieve something. I want us to progress. I want us to be in, in the position where we're fighting for the title. That's why, I, that's what drives me, not, um, you know, not the, the demise. Because then if that's, your, if that's your kind of measure always is to, you know, you're peering over the back fence to see what your neighbour's building, then you're going to just be, you know, you could both have the worst, worst house in the street because everyone else is building beautiful places and you're just looking over the back fence. Can you talk a little bit about, about the Glasgow Derby and the emotions of that and what, yeah, what it's, you from? Yeah, it was massive and, um, and and I think that always, well, the, the, the couple of years I was there and you've seen it this year as well, it takes extra significance because usually they decide the title of those games. That's how tight it usually is. So it's not just, you know, beating your biggest rivals and what it means to your supporters, but you also know that, you know, in those four games, if, if it swings one way or another, it probably means you've lost the title as well or or it's a cup final. It's either a cup semi-final or a cup final. So they're, they're massive games. And um, as I said before, you need to embrace that, understand the responsibility you have. But I, I never sort of, you know, even when I was up there, I never wanted to win those games because it meant that, you know, Rangers would, would lose. I just wanted to win because I wanted us to win and I wanted us to win the title and I wanted us to win those games. And uh, and I think, again, sometimes if that's your only measure, if you're, you know, just staying ahead of whoever your, your biggest rival is and, you know, whilst you're fighting amongst each other, others could be going past you. So I've always sort of made a you know, conscious effort to know that the measure should always be, you know, ourselves and how good we can be. It'd be nice to have Arsenal and Spurs contesting the title. It's been by the Mate, it'd be nice to see us with anybody contesting. I kind of don't care who it is, but as long as we're in there, and that's 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 hopefully the plan. Thanks, Tom. Um, kind of on from that, the way the fixtures panned out, you were playing the three types of challenges, um, coming up in a position where you can have a big impact on how it all winds up. You've obviously outlined why the season's happened the way it has, but how much is that sort of giving you a sense of drive, you know, seems to be part of that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's you know, that's what I've sort of been saying all along, is that that's where I want to want us to be, you know. I want us to be fighting, you know, for those, um, you know, when it gets to this time of the year, to be one of the ones fighting for, for the ultimate prize. But, you know, right now we're, what, 10, 15 points behind that, and that's... That's your measure, you know, that's what, because you can win a game, we can win on Sunday, it doesn't mean we're title contenders this year, you've got to be a title contenders, you've got to do it over the course of a whole year. And, you know, that's what I'm measuring ourselves. So we know we've still got some work to do, um, but at the same time, we're, we're in a better position than we were 12 months ago to, to sort of build on that. And um, that has to be our aim, you know, that has to be our aim that, you know, in 12 months time, we're hopefully in a position where you know, we're one of the contenders rather than trying to disrupt them. As George mentioned in Harry Kane, he obviously was such a producer of goals for his team, but Spurs have scored more on the stage than they did last season than they had one. I mean, how much is that? He is the best job to score goals in the place. Yeah, look, it's um, obviously, you know, that was going to be a big challenge for us um, because. Harry's he's arguably the best number nine in the world at the moment um, and he was a consistent goal scorer at this football club in the Premier League um, irrespective of, of the club's fluctuations he always scored goals so you, you take that out you, you've got to fill that breach and we were never going to fill that breach with, with like for like it was going to have to be a bit of a spread and I think the lads have, have done a decent job of, of covering that spread um, we, we had to and, and I think you know we have but I, I still feel and I, I think I've kind of feel like I'm repeating myself. I still think that's the area of the park we need our, our biggest still improvement in that front third. I still think there's there's a long way for us to go to 
to, to kind of, if we're going to bridge that gap with the top side, I just still think it's the area of the park where we still need to have a lot of growth. Um, but, you know, in the in in the absence of like such a, a key player as Harry for us to, you know, still be in the position we are and score the goals we have, I think is a credit to, to the group. Last has not been talked about how Declan Rice and Georgino have played a huge role in having this season in the field. Ethan Sumer, I remember in that 2-2 draw, had a fantastic game, a brilliant start to the season. Um, sometimes feel like he's maybe not quite hit those levels of play. How happy are you with that particular area of the pitch and the control, presumably, they're given on one from games going? Yeah, look, I, I, I think. I think it's a, it's kind of a similar kind of narrative for all the parts of our games where you know there's been parts this year in the midfield like I said with Eves, um, with Pape Sar, with Matters where you know they've had some really strong performances and then they've had disruption for one reason or another. Some of it you know forms dip, but some of it's because of absences. You know whether that's Matters with an injury or. You know, Pape and, and Bierce had to go away for the Afghan and Bierce was suspended for a few games as well. So I, I just think, you know, if I had to sort of broad stroke a, a narrative for us as a club this year, it's just been really sort of stop-start kind of year. It's felt that way, even our fixturing's been similar. And apart from those first 10 games, <clears throat> we haven't hit any real rhythm or consistency in performance or, or consistency in just, you know gaining some traction as to how we're going to play our football and I think whether that's Bierce or you know Benton cause another one who kind of missed the first part of the year came back got injured came back so you know there hasn't been any real you know for want of a better term consistency in anything we've done uh, it just feels like it's been a disruptive season I know that's how I feel internally where it's hard for me it's probably the hardest part for me to assess because there's no real chunk of work where I've gone you know what this is I mean maybe Apart from the first 10 games, but that's not enough of a sample to say, well, you know what, whether it's individual performances or collectively, I can really sort of get a great measure of it. It just feels like I'm just taking little samples from everywhere. And um, But it is what it is, and we're, we're, we're kind of, you know, whether it's Biss or any of the other guys, like I so said, we've got six games where, you know, we can sort of maybe firmer, have a, a better sort of sense of, of, you know, some of these things and where we're at. Done. And Arsenal finished eighth in both of our testers' first two seasons in charge. I mean, you've been nowhere near that position all season, but they showed a great deal of patience. I just wondered kind of how much you think that patience might be important in, in your project here. Yeah, look, I... I'm reticent to say that you know there has to be patience. I've never felt like there has to be patience. I think what there has to be is belief in something, you know. So whether... You know, I, I think the reason probably Arsenal were patient was because they saw they had an outstanding manager who, you know, this was his first job and he was he was going to get better and if they supported him, they could see beyond just, you know, the obvious, which is results and, and table standing and, and say, well, you know, actually, we think we've got a chance here if we stick to this process. But I don't think you should do it blindly. You shouldn't just say, well, you know what, well, let's just wait two years and then see, you know, unless the club or, you know, the people in charge feel like they are seeing that, then yeah, I do. You have to have some patience in that process because, you know, as I said, we, we, you know, if I'd said at the start of the year that, you know, our sort of, you know, some of our key players would be a, a, a first year goalkeeper, a, a central defender who's only had one year in the Bundesliga, or a, a left back who's, you know, first year in, in the, in the Premier League, you know, I think a lot of these things you've got to keep in the context of saying, well, what we're hoping is that we're creating an environment where there's going to be growth with these guys and, you know what, that's worth persevering with. Um, I think if, if you don't feel that, then there's no real need for that patience just for patience' sake. I think the patience comes in when there's belief there and then you realise actually we're not being patient, we're just believing in something. So I think that's the key component. Yeah, I guess I agree but I think there's more of a desperation of the winning trophy mm. it's been so long and perhaps that would lend itself to you know what you talked about 
going with domestic cups, just trying to win something and then mm. trying to, to, to get ahead of themselves. Mm. Perhaps that wasn't. Yeah, look, well, yeah, and and uh, yeah, I mean that's a good point because as I said before, I think every club's a little bit unique in how they go about sort of rebuilds and how patient they're prepared to be, or how sort of how much belief they have in a project and what's what's the objective. And I, I am, I'm trying to steer the club away from being desperate for just anything because. You know, there's some recent examples of clubs who have won cups and it provides no solace really if you're not performing in the league consistently and, and challenging for the main honour. So, um, but, you know, again, I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not in charge of that. What I'm in charge of is kind of trying to build a team that I believe can can succeed and, and succeed in a, a sustainable manner. Um, and But also understanding that, the, that, you know, this club does have unique factors around it that may mean that at times that belief may waver or, well, I've got to make sure we, we stay on track with that. And I'm not expecting to get your 11, but um, does Destiny's absence... That's, you won't be disappointed, <laughs> mate. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have, do you have yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Ben will start. Ben will start, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. So you're not totally yeah. disappointed. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. Yeah. Darren, you got the... Hey, Darren. Hi, man. Can you with first North London Derby? Ah, uh, oh, first North London Derby, that's a good one. Um, oh, it, was, it, was, it would have to be kind of maybe late, uh, late 70s, I think, um, in terms of my viewing of uh, all those kind of significant events. So... Um, yeah, so it would be back then, but I was always kind of conscious of, you know, it's one of the big derbies in, in sort of English football in particular. Um, and um, yeah, you're always kind of intrigued with the ones where, you know, there's there's history there, there's proximity there, all those kind of things that, that play into it and, and you understand the significance of it. Also, I think this first time I've had much of a reflection of the only new tournament at the start of the season about the career trajectory yeah, look, I, I am because I'm I'm pretty hard on them to be honest. I think I mean, it was mentioned before. Would you have taken fifth at the start of the year? I think a lot of people would have. And and when I think of the challenges I've put to this group of players, a lot of them, like I said, first team, first time in the Premier League, or still very young in age, or you know, not having that sort of hard and experienced, um, losing some, you know, we lost some real key experience from the group at the start of the year. I'm really, you know, but I, I haven't wavered in not making excuses for them, and and I love the fact that they haven't sought that and have never sort of felt sorry for themselves if anything they've been the other way and um so i am i'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm, I'm like i said i'm purposely being hard on them because i just feel that i just think some of the potential within this group at the moment is is pretty exciting um and i don't want to limit that and i don't want them to li limit it to themselves and and um and embrace it you know and and be disappointed with where we are be disappointed that we haven't been successful this year, even though it's our first year, because that's the kind of attitude I've had in my whole sort of career, that I don't want to waste a year, I don't want to waste a season on, on, you know, something that might come in years to come. You know, the opportunities here and now, and, um, you know, I, I have been proud of the way, not just the young players, but even to the experienced players, guys like Sonny and, 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 and others who, you know, have also embraced that challenge of, saying, OK, we're a new group. It could be so easy to say, well, this is a five-year project, but they've said, no, we, we want to be better than that, we want to be better than that quicker. So so from that perspective, I am, yeah. But Harry, um, when you left and all the noise outside, is there, I mean, obviously you've done that now, so I wonder if you can just maybe elaborate on what you said to the players to kind of just go on Yeah, I mean, I, I think that was the sort of starting point for us because, I mean, it was I was literally sitting in here the day before the Brentford game and he just left, you know. So you're starting a season and, you know, the most significant person at this football club maybe ever, I don't know, by the time it, the dust settles, has just left on the eve of the first game. And, you know, I remember just make, uh, making a real conscious effort of, of 
you know, it's the old, you know, duck just looking really graceful above the water and just if there's any panicking happening, just make sure it's under the water where no one can see, you know, particularly the players. And, um, and again, you know, the players never batted an eyelid with that, you know, and, and, the, and you could, you could, because, I mean, you, you just see what Harry's done at Bay in this year. I mean, it's been unbelievable, you know, and, and you go, geez, that's a significant player that's left this football club, and yet he hasn't been as mentioned as much as he would have if we weren't successful, I think, and if we weren't scoring goals, I think his name would have come up a lot more. And I think, again, it's a credit to the group, the playing group, that they've embraced that, that challenge. I think these things will all... In, you know, again, hopefully I'll have a better sort of uh, clarity in my own mind, but I just think all these things we've been through this year will help us in the medium and long term, uh, even the disrupted season, I think, because it kind of removes any kind of excuse we can have for next year. You know, we're not going to lose another Harry Kane next year. You know, we're not going to have as disrupted a season. So you, we're going to probably, well, with a bit of luck, have less injuries, you know, next year. So there's nothing to clutch there, you know. We've already done that, we've been through that, we've come out the other side not too bad, not where we want to be. So I still think that will help us, um, but it's not nice when you're going through it though, still. And finish with George, please. I am sticking with the pool with that thing. Not over Charleston, sort of. Yeah. I think how much of a miss has he been, sort of, especially as a public public? Yeah, I mean, without repeating myself verbatim, another one who's just had a disrupted season, mate. When he's been in, he's been really good for us. Um, then had an injury or two injuries or started the season with an injury. And great to have him back, even the training, you can see. And he does, it gives us other options um, in that front third. And, um, you know, I think we're really... We're kind of really fortunate that he, he he was he was probably at his best when Sonny was was away and he kind of filled that breach and we we're talking about how we're going to cover goals we've lost with with Harry I think at different times those both have stood up um, but we've really had them together you know um, sort of in, a, in in great physical shape so um, he's looking at training this week which is good so he, he's obviously um, ready to go and we're going to need him over the last six games and it does it gives us a, another good option in that front third. Yeah, I think it's always important. I mean, I think, you know, obviously when you get to, to certain, you know, games, you know, whether that's a, you know, a cup final or a cup semi-final or games at the end of the year, then it does become all about the result. But I've always felt that, you know, if the results are all important thing, then you better put in a performance. Because if you're hoping just for a result without a performance, you know, you're leaving a lot of things to chance. So it's still, I think, about performance. But ultimately, at this time of the year, points matter um, for us, for the opposition. So, you know, that's the ultimate measure. And, you know, we've got to, we've got to put in a performance to give ourselves a chance to get in the result. OK, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you.